Maji Moy, Dahasor Mave and Shaw Majing. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm absolutely delighted to be here this morning and have the opportunity to say a few words as the conference gets underway. It's good to see so many f familiar faces, and, and I'm told actually that we could have filled the room even with more people because um, the, the conference was oversubscribed. So I think that shows the interest and, and the need for, for the discussions that are going to happen today. I know you have quite a, an impressive lineup of speakers today, and I'm, and I'm sure um, there's plenty to be gained from the discussions that will be had throughout the course of the day. I'm also acutely aware that it's easier said than done. Innovation requires a considerable investment in not just time, in energy, money and commitment. And that said, uh, stagnation is not an attractive alternative. In Going for Growth, the Agri-Food Strategy Board recognised the need for the red meat sector and set very ambitious and unchallenging targets for its growth up to 2020, including growth turnover by 65%, growth value added by 65%, growth in external sales by 78% and growth in employment by 34%. I believe these targets are achievable and I've always said that. I think they're achievable provided that the sector delivers on the board's recommendations of strengthening the supply chain, improving on-farm production efficiency and also improving herd health. The majority of any growth is likely to take place in markets outside of the north and Colin picked up on, on markets such as China which we've been targeting. Our produce will be competing on a global marketplace. The ability to match the demands of markets will therefore be key to ensure the long-term sustainability of the sector. Improvements in communication, market requirements throughout the supply chain and responding to the needs of consumers will also be vital. Turning to the focus of the conference today, innovation will also play a vital role in the sustainable growth of beef industry and its importance is recognised throughout Going for Growth. Innovation can take many forms. It may be introducing high value technology, process re-engineering or simply changing existing work practices. I believe how we manage that change can be as, um, manage that innovation can be as uh, critical as actually the change. I'm pleased that AFB Research and Development, funded through the department and co-funded by Ag Research, has led to the development of important innovations for the industry to inform management decisions and in doing so drive forward production efficiency. The Bovine Information System, BOVIS, through providing real-time carcass benchmarking information for beef producers, represents a key step forward for the industry here. The beef monitoring tool within BOVIS will help producers make the best decisions in relation to feeding and management in the rearing and finishing stages of beef systems. Such tools, which you will hear more, for, more about throughout the presentations, are vital to help produce continue to improve production efficiency, which is also important at this difficult time for the beef sector. I want to, and I'm sure everybody in the room also wants to see, a profitable, a strong red meat sector here in the north. And that can only be achieved if farmers see a fair return for the produce that they produce. The produce that they produce is fully traceable, it's of the highest standard, and it's only right that they receive fairness in that supply chain. I know that the beef industry has faced quite a number of difficulties over the last nine months and you don't need me to rehearse them, but um, not least the fallen beef prices and the penalties that were imposed for out-of-spec cattle. I've been very concerned about the impact on individual farmers and the wider industry. Given that this industry is an integral and important part of the agri-food sector on the island, it's essential that we maintain dialogue, dialogue on the issues of concern and seek to build effective, transparent relationships right across the supply chain. Over the last nine months, I've met and listened to farmers, processors, mart operators, the LMC about significant changes to the pricing structure for cattle. I've also asked the meat plants to reconsider their position on penalties and engage with representatives from the large supermarkets and McDonald's to discuss possible ways forward and how to explore how we can build confidence in the beef market. In addition, last week we launched the new software update to APHIS to provide markets with residency information on cap cattle that's being sold through their businesses. I'm encouraged to some extent that all elements of the beef supply chain are committed to working together to address the current difficulties for the benefit of the industry as a whole. I'm also pleased to see that increases have been recorded in beef prices in the north during the autumn and I'm hopeful that we're now close to a resolution on all these issues which have been causing such concern to the industry. I certainly will continue to do what I can to support improved, transparent communication on pricing and market requirements throughout the supply chain. 
I am pleased that my department, with important co-funding from Agri Research, is funding a strong portfolio of research for the beef sector within AFBI. Whilst there's not been the financial headroom this year to commission new research, I recognise that the good work that is um, being undertaken for the beef sector within AFBI on ongoing projects to underpin the competitiveness and the environmental credentials of the industry. These projects are addressing a broad range of issues affecting the sustainability of the industry and by highlighting them I want to acknowledge the important research work that has taken place and the significant investment by my department is placing on this area of work. Ongoing research for beef sector within DARD's Evidence and Innovation Programme includes projects on suckler cow nutrition for optimum performance, a project on the health of suckled calves and the development of beef and sheep systems for improved sustainability, biodiversity and delivery of ecosystem services. The importance of eating quality is recognised in projects looked, looking at the nutritional attributes of free-range grass-fed milk and meat and beef from dairy breeds versus beef breeds. In addition to these projects, ongoing research in addressing issues relevant to all grassland farms, including the impact of soil compaction on soil quality, grass growth monitoring and information to improve grassland utilisation and establishment of improved fertiliser recommendations for grassland. This demonstrates my department's commitment to research to help underpin the future sustainability of the industry. Whilst there are significant financial pressures for 1516 and beyond, my department has issued a new call for research within the DAR-directed AFB work programme and is closely working with AFB to help shape next year's research programme. I also appreciate the work that AFB and Agri Research has undertaken to exploit the opportunities that exist to increase the drawdown of competitive research funding from a variety of other sources, including the EU Horizons 2020 programme and the Strategy for Agricultural Technologies. Increasing collaboration between research providers and funders is a positive development to address today's increasing complex issues affecting the livestock industry. My department can also help facilitate more cooperation and more collaboration across beef supply chains and provide training and advice to help improve efficiency through the next Rural Development Programme 14 to 20. Having received the executive's approval for my department's bid for up to £250 million for a farm business improvement scheme, that will give us additional funds to help um, bolster up the RDP budget value to £623 million. This funding will help us deliver on the aims and the objectives in the Agri-Food Strategy Board's report, including the Farm Business Improvement Scheme. The need to address the relatively low levels of genetic progress being achieved, particularly in the beef sector and sheep sectors, has been highlighted in several strategic industry reports, including Going for Growth. I'm aware of the work in the South on genomics in the beef sector and the system that they are using. I'm also aware of Minister Coveney's recent announcement on the increased support for the use of genomics in the South, as well as support for the marketing of beef. There may be opportunities within the new RDP to assist the industry overcome some of the barriers to genetic progress which exist, particularly in the red meat sectors. We have therefore ensured that there is sufficient flexibility within the, the draft rural development programme that's went to Europe and other work streams to accommodate further developments. Operational groups represent a key measure within the Rural Development Programme proposals to facilitate the uptake of new research by the industry and provide a framework to direct future R&D and knowledge transfer priorities and activities. By bringing together researchers, advisors and the industry, operational groups will seek a coordinated approach to research and knowledge transfer. We have a track, strong track record in the North in this regard, demonstrated in today's papers which will be presented by right across the industry from AFB, CAFRI, LMC, DARD and the industry itself. So in conclusion, uh, to Colin, Mr Chairman, given the breadth and the scale of the challenges that are facing the industry, I believe the only way that we can be effective is in partnership working. That's partnership working right across government departments, across all of the agencies and with the farming industry and the rural communities. And that's a, an approach that I've very much been wedded to, an approach that I'm very much committed to in the time ahead. So I very much hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. I, I'm sorry I can't stay for the rest of it. Um, I'm part of um, the political negotiations, which I'm sure you're, you know they're ongoing at this moment in time. But I really hope that um, you get an awful lot out of today. There's such a great lineup of speakers, and I wish everybody all the best for the rest of the day. Thank you very much.